This episode from Driving with Gloves is about what is called the only real American sports car. And although this car make was not taken seriously by the European exotics, it was the winner against the Lamborghini Countach, the Ferrari 308 GTSi, the Lotus Esprit Turbo and both Porsches 928S and 944. Hi, my name is Cor and welcome to my channel Driving with Gloves. I always drive with car gloves. Your question might be why do I drive with gloves and my answer is why not. When I was a teenager, I used to live in the Netherlands. American TV series were very popular in the Netherlands. Series like Magnum PI, The Dukes of Hazard, Knight Rider, The Fall Guy, and above all, The A-Team. But why do I say, above all, there was The A-Team? I will explain it to you. Magnum drove a Ferrari 308 GTS, but it wasn't his own one. It was owned by the mysterious Robin Masters. So Magnum was a bit like me. I drive all these beautiful cars on driving with gloves, but I do not own them. Then you had Dukes of Hazard with a General Lee. I still say yeehaw when I'm driving fast. Yes, the General Lee was a cool car, especially the horn. But if I had to choose between the General Lee and Daisy Duke, although I'm a petrol head, I would have chosen Daisy. Michael drove the first talking car, which was at that time something sensational, but I never actually liked the looks of Kit. The full guy drove a truck, but I looked more forward that Helen Thomas showed up in a bikini than the truck. And above all, you had the A-Team. Well, you had a stupid van from Beer Barracas, but there was one person from the A-Team who had it all. He was exactly what I wanted to be and would finally become. A very handsome, smooth-talking man. Yes, he got all the women he wanted. He was actually even better than James Bond. Face, because I'm talking about him, was the only one from the four who was a car guy. He thought also that it was a very stupid van, so he drove a private car. He drove a Corvette, to be precise, he drove a white Chevrolet Corvette C4. I have never owned a C4, but I used to own a C5 when I was way younger. I remember picking up a friend of mine in Italy. When he saw me driving a Corvette, he said immediately, So, are you the face man? From that moment, I knew I had finally reached my goal, because I had finally become like the face man. This is the Chevrolet Corvette C4 and thanks to Simon Carr in Agno in Switzerland I have the opportunity to review this beautiful car today. The C1 was first launched with a six-cylinder engine trying to make an attempt to make an American sports car but it flopped but it was saved by the bell by replacing the engine by an all-American V8. The C2 was a fantastic looking car but for me although, the chrome models from the C3 are the best looking cars ever. I think though that only the C3 chrome models look good, because the old plastic versions after 1973 with a lack of power were a design disaster from my point of view. In 1982 they stopped making them and then there was no Corvette anymore. Chevrolet was not capable to launch the Corvette C4 in 1983 but the TV series, the A-Team, was launched in 1983. The A-Team survived as soldiers of fortune. In the intro it was said, if you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team. Perhaps this was exactly what Chevrolet did, because they finally launched in 1984 the C4. 
and Gas who drove a C4. Yes, Lieutenant Templeton Pack, nicknamed the Face Man. The C3 was actually based on the C2. It had a new beautiful body over the existing chassis. After 1972 the C3 got castrated. It had big engines with hardly any power output. The C4 was a complete new design. It was revolutionary. Although it costed as much as a Porsche 944, the C4 was the best sports car of that period. It accelerated way faster than the same priced Porsche 944 and even faster as the double priced Porsche 928S. It was even the fastest braking car and best handling car compared to the Lamborghini Countach, the Ferrari 328 GTSi, the Lotus Esprit Turbo or the Porsche 928S. A Lamborghini Countach from that time would have cost you four times more. Further, a Corvette C4 could reach an incredible lateral acceleration of 0.91 g. With the so-called Z51, or in American English, Z51 setup, it could do even a more astonishing 1.01 g. No production car had reached these lateral acceleration values up to then, so it was the best value for money, a true sports car. Jerry Palmer was the designer of the fourth generation Corvette. It was no Coke bottle design anymore, but it was therefore more aerodynamic. Look at the angle of the windscreen, 64 degrees, which is ultra flat. So the car is very aerodynamic. It has a coefficient of drag of 0.34, which was very low in that period. It came on the market in 1984 with a futuristic digital display, so it seemed like Kid from Knight Rider. Fortunately, they were so smart at Chevrolet that they redesigned the interior in 1990 and finally put in some analog gauges, as you can see in this wonderful looking Chevrolet Corvette C4 from 1990. If you compare this car with the version of the C3 from 1982, you must say that this is way sleeker and more aerodynamic. It is also way shorter. It has a length of only 4 meters 48, which is 16 centimeters shorter than the C3. It is very low because it has a height of 1 meter 90. And it is 5 centimeters wider, so now it has become 1 meter 80. You do not have a T-top anymore, but this is a Targa. This is the coupe, so you can remove the roof panel and after a stop of 10 years they reintroduced the convertible again and this is how you remove the target top and then you put it in the boot And look at this bonnet, it opens completely and when it is open you can see the magnificent L98 V8 engine. This is by the way called a clamshell hood. The C4 started with the L83 350 cubic inch which is a 5.7 liter engine which had a power output of 205 PS which was increased to 230 PS one year after the launch of the C4 with the L98 5.7 liters in 1985. This C4 from 1990, however, has a L98 5.7 liter engine with a power output of 245 PS at 4000 RPM and an enormous 468 Newton meters of torque at 3200 RPM. 
It has a top speed of 247 km an hour and accelerates to 100 km an hour in 7.1 seconds. The L98 was the fourth generation of V8 engines made by General Motors and was the standard engine of the Corvette between 1985 and 1991. From 1986 it had its aluminium cylinder head. Other engines used in the Corvette C4 were all 5.7 liters. There was the LT5 with a power output from up to 405 PS. Further, there was the LT1 and the LT4. Interestingly, the coil spring front suspension of the C3 was replaced by a leaf spring setup in the C4. So, are we going back to the dark middle ages? Well, to be precise, it was replaced by a fiberglass monoleaf spring transversely mounted across the frame. It weighs only half of the coil spring setup, but gives the Mark R a remarkable cornering stiffness, which I hadn't expected. <laughs> what makes this car so good? The sound is so fantastic. This is the big advantage of a big V8 engine. Further, there are these enormous torque figures without any turbo lag, because there is no turbo. Instant power, almost like in an electric car, but not with the sound of a sewing machine, but with the infernal sound of a hurricane. In general, white cars are not my favorite, and I can tell you that I start to feel miserable. You know what causes that? Well, it is this white Chevrolet Corvette C4. And if you think I feel miserable because it is a bad car, you are completely wrong. I do feel miserable because it's not my car, and I have to bring it back after filming this review. But look at the extremely low price tag. Perhaps I should consider buying it myself. Thank you very much for watching this episode from Driving with Gloss. Special thanks goes to Simon Carr in Agno in Switzerland for lending me this wonderful white Chevrolet Corvette C4 from 1990. With a few stripes, this car would look like the Faceman's car. So please like this video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel Driving with Gloves. See you next time in a new episode from Driving with Gloves.